Hey, good morning, everyone. Josh of Severe Weather. Happy Friday to you. We've got a major storm getting ready to cross the country this weekend into the first part of next week, bringing a wide variety of dangerous conditions for travel. Uh, severe weather for parts of the south, heavy snow for parts of the south central U.S., and in particular, the northeast. And yes, New York City and Boston are going to be in the mix here for potentially heavy snow as we head into Tuesday as the storm system heads into the northwest Atlantic and becomes a bomb cyclone. And that means it'll strengthen quickly, dropping about 30 millibars in 24 hours. That's the, that's the actual official meteorological term, not just something I made up to scare folks. Um, but we'll talk about what that's going to mean here and what's going to follow it is going to be a, a shift towards some much colder weather across, especially the central and eastern United States. Uh, so let's take a look at things here. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Uh, very unique weather setup here. Uh, we had snow on the ground with a couple of brief but strong tornadoes over Wisconsin and Illinois last night. Uh, very, the weather's confused. The system is broken. No, not really. It's just a very mild push of air, a little bit farther north than we typically see this time of year. So our first recorded tornado in Wisconsin. Of course, my thoughts and prayers are with the people who had to deal with that last night, a very scary situation. I really pray that everybody's okay, but we need to focus on the future here and what's to come. Our next storm system moving into the Southwest is going to cross the country, bring some snowfall here, Friday night into Saturday across uh, the Rockies and Southern Plains. And then as the system crosses the country, it's gonna draw moisture out of the Gulf, uh, unusually mild air in place, classic El Nino. Uh, the track is going to be a little farther north than what we've been dealing with, meaning the threat for severe weather does start to shift northward. And it will be primarily near and north of Interstate 10 up to Interstate 20 here as we get to the weekend. So East Texas, uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, maybe northern Florida over into the Carolinas, all at risk for some severe weather um, as we get through, uh, especially the second part of this weekend and the first part of next week. And the, there will be a piece of energy ahead of that, by the way, that does produce a little severe weather as well overnight tonight into Saturday and Saturday night over parts of the Mid-South. But the better chance is going to be where there's more moisture in place later in the weekend into the start of next week. And if we look at the satellite image, uh, we see the fire hose, the Pineapple Express, classic strong El Nino here, where we've got a deep feed of moisture indicated by these brighter clouds. Uh, moving out of the eastern Pacific right across northern Mexico, the southern U.S., and curling all the way up into the eastern United States. A continuous line of moisture getting fed in here. Um, the fast winds aloft um, that were produced by this storm system here. Uh, let me find my pen. It's missing. <laughs> Come back. Uh, here's the big cyclone here, and you can see this powerful front that's drifting, pushing south and east. Now, the dynamics with it are not nearly as strong today as they were yesterday. So I'm not expecting to see severe weather here. You would say, well, it happened in Wisconsin and Illinois and here last night. Why wouldn't it happen up in here? Different setup now. The, 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 the flow is uh, now starting to spread out and we're not seeing the focus for severe weather. But it is warm. We even are seeing some rain all the way up into parts of Quebec this morning. But uh, I want your attention to focus here on this big trough that's dipping down across northern Mexico and the southern United States. There's a circulation center here out ahead of it. That is going to cross the southern U.S., and bring us a chance for a little bit of severe weather with this leading wave. But then the bigger wave comes through after it, kind of another piece drops down, and that is going to send more moisture up into this direction uh, early next week. So a very wet end of the weekend and start of next week for parts of the south. It'll bring some drought relief for sure, but it's not going to be pleasant. Uh, it's going to be pretty warm, but still pretty cloudy across Florida here over the next few days, even getting warmer here into the Carolinas. Uh, here in Raleigh, I'm expecting a high of 74 tomorrow. Uh, while not a record high, it's, it's as warm as it's been in, in several weeks. I know we got there briefly back in uh, December when I was, or last month, actually. Sorry, my brain's still, I'm dealing with a crud, but I'm, I'm getting rid of it. So anyway, um, that's what we're taking a look at as far as the uh, weather uh, large scale pattern. In the shorter term, right now the map is quieter. Uh, we do have winter weather advisories in the northern and central Rockies. And we now have winter storm watches for portions of the Denver, Colorado area up to Cheyenne, Wyoming, as well as northeastern New Mexico and into uh, parts of northwest Texas into the panhandle in advance of our next storm system. And we do have a winter weather advisory for far northern Maine as uh, we do have a little bit of moisture moving through that region. Here's a look at the bigger scale. This is the European ensemble showing us the upper level pattern. The darker colors indicate colder, more unsettled weather. Uh, the warmer, redder colors indicate unusually strong ridging, which is uh, warmer than average temperatures aloft. And you can see 
a very powerful ridge over the eastern portion of Canada and the eastern U.S. That's why we've got the warm-up coming. But you can also see a very dark uh, feature here um, producing uh, unsettled weather over the southwest. This is the second piece of what bombarded California, where, by the way, there were a couple of tornadoes a couple of days ago. So not just Wisconsin getting unusually unsettled weather, but California as well. Now, as we track this piece of energy across the southern U.S., it comes out in a couple of pieces. The first one fades. So the threat for severe weather is not going to be as high as it comes out of the Rockies into the central United States. But the second piece here starts to link up with colder air that is phasing down from central Canada. This is Saturday night, and then here's Sunday. And you can see two distinct pieces here of energy followed by another piece dropping down. A lot of players on the map here, but the one that we need to focus on is down south here. Um, it is limited in how much cold air is being fed into it, but we've got these two pieces right here to watch. Each of those is going to inject some colder air down. And as we get into Tuesday, um, we see this large upper level feature very quickly accelerating northeast into the Delmarva, New Jersey. Um, but we also see kind of some colder air moving in here. Notice how brightly, warmly colored things were today in this area. Now they're below average. So what's going to happen is while it's not a major blast of cold, there's going to be a feed of colder air that phases into the backside of the system, gives it the kind of kick it needs to produce some snowfall. And the big question mark is where does that happen? Is that going to start in Ohio? Is it going to start in New York? Is it going to start in Maine and Nova Scotia, New Brunswick? Um, the answer is a little bit unclear, but we do have a pretty good feeling that this is going to produce some winter weather on the backside as this colder air drops in behind it. So I'm going to break down the scenarios of where I think the snow is going to fall the heaviest. And we are still about three to four days out. So there will probably still be some shifting in this. I'm, I'm not going to claim I know exactly what's going to happen in four days. That is not meteorologically possible with a complex setup like this, but certainly it's one that we need to watch um, because things can very quickly change. And oh, by the way, after this storm bombs out, bomb cyclone here over Atlantic Canada, it's gonna get stuck. There's blocking here over Greenland and over Baffin Island. And what'll happen is it is gonna be the feed for much colder weather over the next uh, couple of weeks leading behind. Look how strong this ridge of high pressure is over Northern Canada. Here's the polar vortex over North Central Canada. And we're gonna see much colder weather diving down here behind this storm. So in a way, this is the setup for what's gonna be a colder setup as we get later in the next week and then towards President's Day, uh, Washington's birthday and beyond for uh, what should be a very, uh, I guess, exciting weather pattern if you like winter um, across the central and eastern United States. You guys can see multiple storms coming across the southern U.S., cold air continuing to get fed in, and there will be variability, of course, but overall, uh, we are going to see more wintry weather here the second half of February. Temperature anomalies are very warm in the eastern and southern United States right on through the beginning of next week, but much colder air lurks here over the west and eventually the south. This is Monday night, and here you can see chillier than average weather across all of the southeast, across all of the northeast as we head towards Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, and another wave coming down. So it doesn't really warm back up. We'll see a couple of rebound days, but then it gets reinforced with colder air by this time next week. So we are definitely going to see that cold coming down. Um, Alaska has been super cold up until now. The pattern is flipping. And when we see that flip first in Alaska, we eventually see it in the central and eastern United States. Even the west, by the way, uh, will be more unsettled here uh, with colder weather. So this is a, a sign that uh, we are definitely going to see more persistent cold coming in waves here. And um, the pollen that's out there this weekend in the southeast will get, will get kind of suppressed, which is good news for those of us that, that have to deal with that. So here's a look at the European model. And you can see our first storm system moving through eastern Canada. Uh, we see the next one dropping down into Texas, heavy rain and some severe weather expected here. This is going to be tomorrow, uh, very wet from Texas over into southwestern Virginia, western North Carolina, upstate South Carolina, going to be pretty wet and nasty. And south of that area of heavy rain will be some severe weather. You can see our cyclone starts to develop here over east Texas, colder air follows with it. So we'll see a wintry mix over southwest Oklahoma, over northwest Texas, and also potentially into the Ozarks here. Uh, as we get to Sunday evening, then that low pressure system moves northeast, but the colder air that drops into Canada suppresses that low pressure track. And instead of this load tracking up through places like Buffalo and Montreal, it's going to get pushed farther south and the colder air will be allowed to wrap in this time in places like New York and in New England. That is something we've not seen much of the last couple of winters, but here we go. Low pressure is expected to stay south of New England, allowing that colder air to wrap in. So things could get pretty interesting here 
on Tuesday morning across New England. So I'm going to zoom into that area to show you here in just a second. Behind it, we're going to have multiple storms tracking across the central and eastern United States. More chances for some snow, but more clipper-like systems here later next week. Um, California dries out, but the northwest gets unsettled. Western Canada gets bombed with heavy snowfall here in a week. And then we're going to see something dropping down into the Gulf of Mexico next weekend that we certainly need to watch in the southeast. I'm not sure yet how far north it'll get, if there'll be a threat for wintry weather in the Carolinas, uh, in northern Georgia yet. Um, this could very well be like last week where we got teased with it, and then it ends up just being rain staying south. But if it does come north, there's actually going to be more cold air in place thanks to the storm we're about to get. Um, so there will actually be a cold feed. At least it looks that way. That may change still, though. Uh, here's a look at the GFS model. And uh, let me uh, move us back to today. I'm sorry that didn't load in the latest, but here we go. Uh, waves of moisture moving through the Tennessee Valley in the deep south here through the weekend. Rain spreading into the mid-Atlantic region Saturday night, early Sunday. Carolinas will be mild but wet and maybe stormy. And then here comes our next system uh, across Texas. We'll see snow in northwest Texas, severe weather in east Texas Sunday. And then Sunday night into Monday, a chance for a severe weather outbreak over parts of the deep south, continuing into Monday in the southeast and northern Florida. Uh, limited cold right now on the northern side of this. Somebody could get thumped with some heavy wet snow. But unfortunately, if you're in Indianapolis, Champaign, St. Louis, it, this looks like kind of a near miss unless something changes. Uh, but you can see here with the GFS model, um, it gets the storm cranking faster than the European. And I don't necessarily buy into this, but it is certainly something we're going to have to watch. Um, it would show rain at the onset here around Philly and New York, changing over to very heavy wet snow Tuesday morning in New York City, Connecticut, southern New England, and then it exiting as we get into the evening hours. So uh, this is something we're definitely going to have to watch, but I'm not predicting uh, the exact solution to look exactly like this until I see some more confidence. And right now we don't see that confidence. So for now, it, it certainly has some high ceiling potential to be a major winter storm. Uh, but it's moving pretty quickly, and it's very possible this strengthening that takes place happens a little bit too late for us to see a really big storm in New York or Hartford, Connecticut, or on Long Island. Uh, and it's possible the GFS may be onto something here, and things get together very quickly, and we see a major storm, one, the first one really in a couple of winters here. Uh, Canada, you guys just got hit really hard. Here comes the next piece. This is the European showing our storm across New England and including New York City and Long Island. Um, this is a wintry mix, so rain going over to snow on Cape Cod here on Tuesday. Snow spreading into Nova Scotia, where it could be falling pretty heavily on the coast and according, and also maybe on eastern Prince Edward Island, but more likely across Newfoundland here. Uh, a big snowfall. Take a look at this as our low pressure becomes a bomb cyclone. We could see... Uh, multiple, multiple, multiple centimeters of snow across Newfoundland, maybe 50 um, by the time we get into Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. So that's what we'll be watching. That's the European model. Um, this is the GFS model for the same region. And you can see the bombing takes place a little bit farther south and east, meaning not as much snow for Nova Scotia, very little for New Brunswick, and still a chance for some decent snow across Newfoundland. But um, this track is a little bit farther south to really give you that good snowfall rate. So that's what we're going to be watching for you guys. Let's look a look, take a look here at the comparison. Sorry, I'm, I've got to learn how to talk again. It's been two weeks. Oh, man, bless my heart. Um, but here's a look at um, Sunday across uh, the Southern Plains. And we can see this is the European model. Um, this is the Canadian model, not as heavy with the snow in Oklahoma. Um, here's the GFS and still wet in Oklahoma, maybe a little snow mixed in, but heavier snow around Lubbock, Texas. Uh, here's the Icon model, kind of a mix of the two. Then the NAM model, which is just starting to get into range, which I don't trust yet at this part of the model run. 60 hours and beyond the NAM model doesn't always do as well. Uh, has a major snowfall over northeastern parts of the Panhandle into western Oklahoma. I think that's too fast. Uh, and then the High resolution NAM showing kind of the same thing. Heavy snow west of Oklahoma City, maybe in places like Lawton and uh, western and southwestern Oklahoma. That change may come, but it may wait until after early afternoon for that to happen. Here's a Canadian model as well. And I don't even know why I show it, but the RRFS, uh, an experimental mesoscale model as well, leaning towards a NAM. Now, as we get to the next phase here, um, Sunday evening, we start to see a change over to snow in Oklahoma City and on south and west towards Wichita Falls, Texas. Uh, the Canadian does not have that change happening yet. Neither does the GFS. Uh, the ICON German model is starting to show that. 
And then the NAM and the RRFS are showing um, some of that changeover. And then as we head into later Sunday evening, a change to some snow east of Oklahoma City over towards Tulsa, Bartlesville, even Fayetteville, Joplin, and Springfield here. Uh, however, the Canadian says it stays liquid. So does the GFS for the most part. There could be some snowflakes mixed in, but not a big deal. Um, here's the icon model, which is in between. And I actually kind of like this solution, but I don't know if it's going to be right yet. Showing a, a change from rain to snow in parts of southern and eastern Oklahoma. Uh, and the NAM model keeps that change over farther north all the way into far southern Kansas um, during the late evening hours on Sunday. And then here's the Canadian, which has that change all the way down to the south of Wichita Falls, getting into uh, big sky country in Texas. Let's shift east. A lot of you all are watching from the Ohio River Valley in the Midwest, and I've heard about, man, we just keep missing, we keep missing, we keep missing. You're not going to want to see this then. Just, just skip forward because this is going to be disappointing to you, unless it changes, and it could. Um, but here's a look. I don't know what happened here to my, <laughs> to my loop. Oh, Lord. Um, here's what we're going to do. Um, I had this loaded, and it decided to not work for me but unfortunately that's what happens in this business all right here's a european and you can see there is some wet snow mainly just south of st louis um, to north of cape Girardo, over southern illinois and starting to see a wintry mix here this is rain going over to snow in southern indiana and southern ohio this is monday morning to about midday on monday uh, the canadian model doesn't have that mixing though in indiana and illinois the gfs is slower on this system quite a bit slower than the european by about half a day almost uh, so it dumps heavy wet snow on the Ozarks, but keeps us dry, believe it or not, in Indiana. Now, that's not the spread you want to see if you want a confident forecast. Here's a German icon, and we see kind of a mix in between the two. And again, I kind of like this because it's a halfway point. That doesn't mean it's right. The NAM model is, uh, again, kind of out of range, but has this snow farther north into St. Louis. I think that's too far north, to be honest with you guys. I think it ends up in southern uh, Missouri and maybe more mixing at that point. And then here's the uh, Canadian high res model. And then the, back to the European, which is, of course, faster. By the way, this is a severe weather signal for parts of Georgia and South Carolina uh, Monday afternoon. And uh, man, I'm sorry. I, I thought I had this loaded up, but I guess I didn't. So we're going to move us over here to Monday night, Monday evening. And again, European is faster. A little bit of snow here, but nothing to really write home about in Ohio, Indiana, and Northern Kentucky. Uh, the Canadian says it stays liquid. Uh, the GFS isn't even there yet. I think that's too slow. Here's the icon. This would be a little better for Indianapolis, but not that exciting. And then back to the European here. So again, uh, there's going to be shifts in the modeling here. And I just don't know exactly how things are going to play out. All right, here's a look at the Northeast. And it's bombs away, according to the European, uh, near and north of the Pennsylvania Turnpike. State College, north side of Pittsburgh. Zanesville, Ohio, Wheeling, West Virginia, and a mix uh, and changeover even in places like Clarksburg, Bridgeport, Charleston, Parkersburg, and Huntington, but not a big snowfall for you Monday night. Um, yeah, maybe we pick up a quick inch, but really the cold air is not quite in there yet for that to really happen. Uh, Mason-Dixon line on north, this is where the fun starts here Monday night. You can see heavier snow across the Poconos, Hazleton, even up to Scranton, and even down to Allentown, uh, Bethlehem, and Easton, Pennsylvania. Northwest Jersey and primarily rain along the I-78 corridor and on south. Heavy rain for Wilmington, Delaware, Baltimore, uh, Have de Grace, uh, all the way into Central Jersey and into the five boroughs in Long Island. Heavy snow, though, when you get north uh, of the Tappan Zee Bridge and up into parts of upstate New York and Connecticut. This is according to the European. The Canadian is not very exciting on this one. Uh, it uh, continues to back off but it is an outlier. And I don't really like outliers, um, but certainly it's something that we need to watch. The GFS isn't even in the picture yet. It's starting to bring rain to Pittsburgh. Remember I showed you heavy snow. The GFS says it's rain here. There's a warm nose, but then the cold does start bleeding into the Appalachians from the north. So eventually the setup is there, but we're not there yet. And the icon model says rain in State College over to Allentown, snow across the northern tier into the twin tiers in New York and back to the exciting European. Now, flash forward here a few hours, uh, later Monday night, Tuesday morning. Again, the Euro is faster, but it's all the way over the snow in Philly, Wilmington, Have the Grace, maybe even Baltimore, over into Montgomery and Howard counties in Maryland, and into the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia. 
Uh, there could be some snowflakes I'm not even showing you um, over the higher uh, country of North Carolina, East Tennessee, but not a big deal, maybe an inch or two in Sugar Mountain, Beach Mountain. Uh, but look at this, heavy snow falling across uh, New York City, especially just north of the five boroughs, up the, uh, up the New England Thruway, right up into the Boston area. Not really getting up into Maine, though. Uh, the Canadian, though, says, uh, sorry, folks, this is not going to happen for us. The GFS says it's getting in here and I'm excited. And wow, look at this snow. Again, this is extreme. I don't think this is going to work. Um, not to say it won't snow here, but I think this is this is crazy to see this kind of snow around Lancaster and Lebanon, Pennsylvania. But hey, it could certainly happen still and we're not going to rule it out yet. And then the icon says it's raining on the I-95 corridor, snow off to your north and west and back to the European, which again, I think is a little bit too aggressive. Um, looking ahead, this is the next phase um, as we get into Tuesday afternoon. The European and the Canadian are out to sea. The GFS says, uh-uh, uh, we're getting bombed with heavy snow around New York City, Long Island, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Southern New England. Even the islands are over to snow already. So again, this is an outlier and not one I'm forecasting. I think if you go in between and go with the icon model, uh, the German model, then I think that's going to be a little bit more correct. And it does show a major snowfall around New York City. Connecticut, Southern New England, even sneaking up into Vermont, into the Capital District of Albany, and into parts of Southern Maine here. So this is a good, uh, happy medium between all the models. Doesn't mean it's right, but this is kind of what, if you were going to make a forecast now and try to take a stab at it, this is what you would probably be forecasting. And the European is already out to sea. So pretty crazy, but here's a look at the uh, blend of all the models. Big snow again across uh, parts of Colorado, New Mexico, Northwestern, um, parts of Texas. The purple is six inches and the pink is about a foot. And this is through Monday night. And you can see there is on, on the models at least a little bit of snow potential, maybe an inch uh, spanning across the I-70 corridor. Then when we get to New England, those uh, numbers do pick up. Same with Eastern PA. Uh, looking at uh, parts of the South, I'm going to give you guys more detail here and I need to move fast. Um, you can see a blend of all the models here shows a few inches in the Ozarks, several inches in North Texas, and a pretty decent sized snowfall over the mountains of New Mexico, Colorado, and even getting into the higher plains here, a few inches will be possible. Looking farther east, it doesn't look as exciting for the time being here, just about an inch, uh, which is an average of the models around St. Louis, Jefferson City, uh, not very much or very little in Chicago and Detroit. Most of that stays across central Indiana and then shifting into Northern Ohio. We may see an inch or two around Erie and Cleveland and Pittsburgh higher amounts in the mountains. And again, nothing in Western North Carolina. I wish we could get something here, but we're not gonna see much of anything at this point. Then shifting to the Northeast, this is where the numbers vary the greatest, but if you average everything together, three to six inches of snow across much of the Northeast, lesser amounts South of 95, uh, but still a potential here, because this is just a blend. Again, the GFS going bonkers here, not necessarily gonna be the case. The European says there will be some snow, the Canadian says nothing, the icons in between. So you average them together and this is what you get at this point. Um, this is the European showing three to six uh, across uh, areas near north of the New England Thruway and north of 80. Um, this is a look at the uh, Canadian, very little except back in the Poconos. Uh, the GFS slower and of course dumps more snow because of that. Um, three to six inches New York City on northward, quite a bit more in the mountains. Here's the icon even farther north. It does have a couple of inches in New York City, several in Boston, uh, Worcester Mass over to the Catskills quite a bit here. Um, and then here's the blend. And this is again, what you might wanna go out with with a forecast, but know that it could be anywhere from two to 10 inches depending on how things wrap up here on this storm system. So still a complex situation. UK met, <laughs> I don't trust that one to be honest with you guys, but again, back to the European here. All right, let's take a look at severe weather and then I'm gonna to have to wrap things up. And uh, this is the first system which brought the severe weather last night into Illinois and Wisconsin, just enough of a warm envelope for there to be a few storms. That, that's just proof to say that with a dynamic storm, even though it's winter time and there's a marginal risk, you still need to have your head on a swivel. Um, unfortunately, that we, we learned that tough lesson last night. Now here's the next system uh, coming out of Arizona and the Four Corners region here today. And wind flow aloft starts picking up here overnight uh, across Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois. On the south side of that is where our severe weather threat starts to build overnight. Uh, we see the next piece coming out of Arizona tomorrow, faster wind flow aloft affecting parts of the deep south here Saturday night. You can see kind of these brighter reds here. Then that piece kind of swings and misses, it moves out. And then there's a second piece that follows here 
for Sunday night and Monday. And this one could bring the best chance for severe weather. Not where the yellow is. It'll actually be out ahead of it where there's some warmer, richer moisture in place over Georgia, the Carolinas, and northern Florida. But this is a setup for a severe weather outbreak, if correct, over portions of the southeast here for later on Monday. Uh, here we can see a marginal risk mainly overnight tonight from Arklatex up into downstate Illinois. Yes, we're talking about snow in a few days, but first we have that risk for a bit of severe weather, mainly hail at this point. As we get to tomorrow, that system fades east. The next system starts going at night, and there is a tornado risk from San Antonio over to Houston and points just northward. Also a threat for hail just west of there. As we get to Sunday, though, this is when things start picking up. Slight risk from East Texas over into Western Alabama, including Jackson, Alexandria, Louisiana, uh, Lufkin, Texas. Um, and then, and there will be some tornado potential in here, but I think a better chance for tornadoes, unfortunately, will be on Monday again in parts of Southern Georgia and maybe into the low country of South Carolina and far Eastern Alabama. And I do think in Northern Florida, this risk could drop a little farther South in places like Jacksonville and Tallahassee. Not the exact same setup as last Monday. In fact, it'll be quite different. However, some of the same places I do have highlighted for risk of severe weather. And we could see some stronger winds getting up closer to the Metrolina area, maybe even up to uh, Fort Bragg, Wilmington, uh, Fayetteville, Raleigh, and those areas as we get into Monday evening, as there will be some warm air in place. So keep an eye on things. Here's the RRFS. Uh, you can see some scattered showers and storms tonight, maybe some hail as we get into the late night hours here across central Arkansas. And then those are going to lift out. This is tomorrow morning, and we see additional rounds of heavy rain, but little severe weather at that point. Another wave of severe weather uh, tomorrow afternoon, maybe even back into the hill country of Texas around Bernie. Um, this particular model shows it around Wichita Falls. We go from hail Saturday afternoon to snow Sunday afternoon or evening. Um, and then we see heavy rounds of rain over northern Louisiana with severe weather potential in here as we get into Sunday. It's going to come in a couple of waves here, but a very unsettled weekend expected. I think we start to th see things taking off here later in the afternoon into the evening hours in northern Louisiana and then shifting east overnight into more of Mississippi and Alabama. All right, folks, I hope you all have a wonderful Friday. I'll have another video tomorrow morning. I am getting better. Thank you for your prayers. And of course, um, if you did enjoy this video and you've come here once, twice before, I encourage you to subscribe. It'll help me reach more people and get the word out about dangerous weather. And if you're like me and I don't expect you to be, but if you are, um, then you give all the glory to God because I thank God this morning for giving me the energy just to get up and do this. Um, the enemy was uh, forcing me to stay in bed, but I thanked God. I went to him in prayer and I gave him all the credit because he gives me the power to do this every day. And I just have to share that with you guys. First Corinthians uh, 15, 57, King James Version, but thanks be to God, which giveth, up, giveth, giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And he is a good Lord. And I just wanted to share that good news with you today. Uh, happy to pray for you guys. If you have any prayer requests, thank you for praying for me. I very much appreciate that. And as always, I give all the glory to God. I thank him every day because it is a blessing to be here on earth. Nothing is guaranteed, uh, but it's, it is a beautiful gift from God. So I hope you guys have a great Friday. Please be safe out there. See you again tomorrow morning. Take care.